Thank you, Arpit. Good morning, everyone. I was thinking, why don't we play Jeopardy or <laughs> you know, the Family Feud? I mean, I tell you what, Heather really to, set the bar for moderators. So I mean, we have Heather, to wherever you are out there. Give all of our answers and questions. That's right. Yeah. And I'm going to limit you to what 60 seconds. What is the edge? <laughs> Come, Melissa. All right. Well, great. Well, let's, let's get into it. So, um, yeah, what is the edge? So it's the Wild West out there, right? You know, from my perspective, lots of whitewashing, lots of uh, terminology, um, you know, from my perspective, lots of folks kind of trying to do things on their own, you know, and it's driving fragmentation. I know, Jason, we've spoken about this, and you definitely have some opinion there. Let's start with you and get your insight. Yeah, it's funny. So, so when, we, when we draw uh, edge to cloud architectures, um, we always put the, the, it in um, uh, portrait mode because it's easier to fit in a PowerPoint. <laughs> and, and literally, the edge is on the left all the time. It's the Wild West. The west side and the east side is like, you know, kind of originally, you know, the cloud and all that, more uh, civilized and been, been, there, <laughs> been there longer, the centralized data centers. But um, so key point, you know, no, there's no single edge. You know, and, and it, this is part of the confusion. I mean, some yeah. it depends on kind of who you are, how you define it. Mm -hmm. um, the way I define edge computing, it's moving compute as close as both necessary and feasible to subscribers or you know devices. Mm -hmm. uh, if I'm a telco, I'm going to move compute you know as as close as I need to to reduce latency you know for subscribers, uh, uh, reduce bandwidth congestion on my own networks. You know, so that could be my cloud edge. You know, or maybe I push, push it into CPE equipment on premise mm -hmm. because I, I have to do that. So there's, there, that's the other thing is there's, they're kind of associated with locations, but that is, even that's an organic boundary. Right. If I'm not an operations person, I'm necessarily going to move compute you know, on prem. You know, if I'm a, a nuclear plant, I'm not going to do the cloud. Right. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and stuff like that. So this, this spectrum of edges. Right. A lot of the fragmentation is due to inherent complexities as you go from cloud to device edge. Mm -hmm. Software and hardware always gets more customized and complex. Um, so you can kind of envision this curve where like the, 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 in the cloud, data centers, IT you know, uh, standardization has happened over the years. It's relatively standard, and not to say it's trivialized. Mm -hmm. But as you get further towards the device edge, the Wild West, hardware starts to get more complex first. You know, I need elevated temperature support, I need ruggedization, then I need all kinds of I.O., then I need class 1 div 2 for explosion proof, then I need custom hardware for every single thing on the planet, like in terms of connected products. You know, car is a little bit different than a toaster. Yeah. And software goes a little, a little <laughs> slightly. Software goes flat a little bit longer. You get into, everyone wants a different flavor of OS, and then you get into all the crazy protocols. And then there's a point where you hit this trade-off uh, at memory constraint, and this is what we call the thin compute edge, where you can no longer do virtualization or containerization. Uh, you want to extend you know, cloud-native principles as close from the cloud all the way down to that last point where you now have to go embedded because of memory. Mm -hmm. And so and we'll talk more about this as we go, but there's these inherent trade-offs. Part of the reason why there's so much fragmentation historically in the edge is because the models for a long time was, I'm going to lock you in right. with my proprietary yeah. protocol. Yeah. I would argue that IoT is more about, uh, IoT and Edge is more about the maker movement than anything. Mm -hmm. The maker movement, Kickstarter, Indiegogo, just Raspberry Pi, Arduino, whatever, ha that, that e ecosystem has driven people to change. Yeah. I can no longer lock you in because someone's going to out-innovate you faster. So now it's about how fast can you innovate and you win by merit, not lock-in. Mm -hmm. And so in IoT, you've seen all these platforms pop up. Everyone thinks that if I can just lock you in, then I can sell your data if you let me. Yeah. The reality is, and this is why we're, we're all collaborating in LF Edge and, and you know, broader communities, is open always wins in the end for scale, right. always. And if you want to really scale, you need a multi-cloud strategy that starts with an open edge. Sure. Mm -hmm. And so this is, this is all the stuff that we're working on. And I mean, I could, there's so many different things we could talk about, but you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, you hit the nail on the head, right? You know, proprietary, and that's the power of open source. Is really, right. you know, Melissa, let's get your, your insight there as well. Well, I think part of what has been also really tremendous in this shift that's happening. You know, Jason kind of talked about what's the, the movements that are moving up the stack. I think we've also seen the cloud technologies and the infrastructure software that's been well established and is becoming, um, you know, more and more productized and um, implemented in common ways, and I think Dan will probably talk a little bit about this in his keynote as well, are coming down the stack. Mm -hmm. But then when you complement that with 
the diversity of workloads coming up the stack, you know, for all of these different use cases. And then you introduce AI and FPGA and GPU, the complexity of what workload needs to go where, physically where, mm -hmm. and how much can I put at that workload, you know, and then how do I load balance and make sure that I've got the right resources, physical resources with regard to, you know, AI, neural networks, GPU, et cetera, where it becomes really, really complex. And um, I think that's one of the things that I hear from our partners a lot is help me figure this out. Mm -hmm. I get why Open's going to win, right. but holy heck, it's really complicated. And how does Open do that? How, how does open source make it easier to manage that complexity? Well, I think part of what you see in the dialogue at sessions like this at ONS and other open source gatherings is a conversation around what is the architecture. And by, by being open, you get the best of the community's mind, mm -hmm. and you are able to leverage the best of the intelligence of where technology is headed and you're also able to leverage a pool of resources. Mm -hmm. It's not just me doing my development on my own kind sure. of thing. Yeah. Um, and so we can actually, if we can agree, I think it takes a little longer to get to common consensus sure. on what that should be, but once we get to a common consensus, we can go much faster. Sure. And then you also have the shared uh, maintenance burden because everybody's not only contributing to the creation, but contributing to the maintenance of it as it moves forward. Excellent, excellent. Eric, your, your thoughts? Yeah, so falling on to what Melissa said, I mean, I think that the horizontal nature or breaking up the vertical integration so that you reduce friction and making it be easier to go deploy things, I think that that's one of the things that we bring to the table, right? By This is what's been done in the data centers with, with the whole sort of how the open source stacks have evolved over time. <coughs> and the same thing is, is it needs to happen on the edge, and it's going to happen on the edge. We're just trying to accelerate it. But in terms of what is the edge? Well, it seems like if you read you know, the trade press, it's anything that isn't in the cloud, right? Mm -hmm. Like, OK, that's not necessarily a very useful definition. Um, what, what I'm trying to do is, is tease apart what are the edge unique requirements, and they're different for different parts of the edge or different edges in the system. So one thing that, that, that to me is interesting is this very sort of deep edge or you know, enterprise edge. In many cases, it's things that are deployed sort of onesie twosies, a server sitting in the ceiling over there managing the AC or whatever, right? Something that does some video analytics, vibration analytics next to a, a, uh, a generator or something. And, and how do you actually manage that? It's very different than what people have done with your laptop and even with your phone, <coughs> because the assumption is that you don't want to send a human being out there to update the software because it's too expensive, right? Because this thing is, it's, you need a ladder to whatever, a crane to get up there. Right? <laughs> um, get somewhere up. else, it's, it, it's, you, know, you need to drive for a couple of hours to get there. So, yeah. so what can you actually do from a software perspective to go address those unique things, whether it's about physical security, about the, the access to the things, and as Jason said, you know, the different I.O. requirements you have at that, that edge, right? dealing with legacy serial ports, um, r random radio technologies. So that's a very diverse thing, but, but how can we make that stuff be more um, accessible so that it's easier to deploy applications out there? Yeah, yeah. And what's exciting about, from my perspective, the LF Edge initiative is you know, unifying these domains and uh, you know, reducing that complexity and that fragmentation when you look at telco, IoT, enterprise, and cloud. You know, and you know, there may be some disagreement here on the panel, but you know, as an analyst, when I sort of look at those domains, I, I, I think telco has one of the biggest challenges when you look at latency, location, and mobility um, um, you know, issues there. So you know, Eric, let's start with you. Are, are there any, any best practices or learnings that the telco domain can take from those other, those other domains? Well, I mean, I think that, that sort of building on the, the sort of horizontal layers, I mean, one thing working up from the hardware is looking at what is actually common in terms of getting, you know, hardware root of trust, being able to have some notions of measured boot in the space where you can actually, you know, take and boot something, typically Linux, but maybe it's a real-time OS or something else that's going to run out there, and then build up from there by providing... Um, 
you know, common connectivity for your applications. The applications, cloud native applications, uh, for they they assume that oh, what I get looks like an Ethernet. Well, but you're running a Rail T, right? And because you're sitting out at the edge. So does the application need to know about that? Well, then it shouldn't have to, right? You mm -hmm. should be able to abstract that thing away. So that notion of uh, inserting a layer of virtualization is something that we're working on in Project Eve and, and as part of LF Edge. So. Jason, um, your insights into the different projects that are also driving that momentum? Well, I'll start on the, on the telco side. I mean, so just like many folks, like many companies over the past couple of years, IoT Edge, whatever, like everyone's trying to lock everybody in again because it's like if I can just lock you in, then I can make money on your data. If you let yeah, me. historically, that's that's, that's historically, but yeah. but the reality is that's like trying to own the internet. So, so <laughs> right. what what anyone, telcos or otherwise, you know, we look at is you must open it up, and then there's you use technology to bring checks back from strangers. This is right. this is how it's also making a scale. So there's a lot of stuff that we're working on. You know, you'll hear hear about soon. You know about that. You know this this notion of inserting trust at a system level, mm -hmm. um, so that you can cross cross between systems of systems. So step one though is like solve the insanity around everybody reinventing the middle. Yeah. You know, for, for, you know, with IoT specifically. So one of the first projects, um, well, a project that, that I uh, helped to get started with a great team at Dell, and it became a Linux Foundation project with you know, EdgeX Foundry, uh, and one of the anchor projects along with Akrano, and, 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 and there's a bunch of others, Eve and, and others coming in, we'll talk about EdgeX was, hey, let's go extend cloud-native principles you know, down to the, the thin compute edge, so to speak. You know, gateways is you know, one way to look at it. Let's do it in a way where you then open up an API in the middle, and if you get enough folks using something through collaboration, then that becomes a de facto standard. And so if you have this open API that allows you to replace components, whether it's device connectors, and I don't care what protocol you speak, because you'll never have one protocol, mm -hmm. southbound especially. There's, there's thousands of protocols southbound in IoT. Why? Because of the lock-in plays. Everyone created protocols so that it was really hard to switch from my control system. Well, now everyone's moving towards it's about software and services, mm -hmm. not about the lock-in. You need to democratize the south so you can monetize the north. Right. And so and Edgex, that agility, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Edgex yeah. is all about like, hey, no, I don't care what hardware you use, what OS you use, platform independent, you know, cloud native, uh, mm -hmm. loosely coupled microservices. You take your pick of protocol, you plug it into the you know, open API, and then everything can be heterogeneous around it. Yeah. And so that's what you know, Edgex was all about and, and, and is all about. And so we're seeing a lot of you know, pick up in that community. And, and there's... Um, you know, so good stuff happening there. Give me that decoupling point the moment data is created, and then I can send data wherever I want. Mm -hmm. the, the the cloud strategy would normally be my, my multi-cloud strategy. If I'm, I'm like I'm a big cloud, is like send me all of your data, and then you can send it anywhere you'd like with if you pay me a lot of money. <laughs> um, the the edge strategy is decouple your data the moment it's created, and then you pick any permutation right. from edge to cloud so all permutations work. Yeah. And then you can kind of transport you know, uh, stuff you know, you know, left and right across the chain. The other one uh, you know, I'd mentioned, so we, we, you know, we've been talking about it earlier this morning, like the glossary project, very mm -hmm. important. You mentioned the, the terminology. There's a lot of yeah. uh, buzzword bingo. Yeah, like, like fog, <laughs> fog and, and foggy. The, the fog is like basically all the edge. <laughs> well, fog right. is foggy. That's why we, we, we didn't really subscribe to that term. But like, you know, fog is I can't see. The fog is everything that's not in a cloud. Same thing. <laughs> see all of the edges the plus ground. the networks in between or whatever. <laughs> right. But I, when I t so it's really important. There's a, a project, this edge computing glossary. is like basically how do we get aligned on terminology yeah, as an industry? Awesome. And it's semantics to some degree. but yeah. Here's some, some examples. So first off, um, depends on who you are, but, but telco you know, world, it's, it's near edge, far edge. But what's near and what's far? Mm -hmm. These are loaded terms. It's like, a, you ever seen Sesame Street, Oscar the Grouch, yeah. near, far? You know, like, like, <laughs> what do you mean? It's better to talk in absolutes. People say real time, way too much. Right. Real time to a building automation person is 15 minutes. Yeah. Real time to an airbag is like a fraction of a second, and right. it must be deterministic. Real time to a financial person is milliseconds, but no one dies if you don't get yeah, your Starbucks. Yeah, in a 5G world, it's, yeah. it's less than five millisecond latency. So, right? so we need to talk about absolutes. So, you know, tiny. I hear all the time data center people say, "Tiny, it's tiny. It's 500 megabytes of footprint." You know, the world <laughs> that, er that that Eric lives in, it's five kilobytes. Yeah. You know, some some cases. So we have to get aligned on absolutes right. that are descriptive around inherent trade-offs. Yeah. And, and that's where I think you know, there's some, some, some ter general terminology, and then there's like, let's not use loaded terms, let's mm -hmm. use absolutes. Yeah. And it matters, because I think like every conversation I'm in, we spend the first 15 minutes of the conversation potato. just getting <laughs> grounded on what we're talking potato, about. Potato, potato. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're like, get over this, right? Right. I think another thing that's um, an, another lesson learned that is an area where LF Edge is investing and it's um, really important is, you know, if we think back to 
what happened with the cloud transformation um, and you know, telcos and cloud operators and tier twos, um, you know, they all implemented common open, many of them implemented common open source projects for their cloud infrastructure. But because they were standing them up as things were being developed, each one of them did it slightly differently. Mm -hmm. You know, OpenStack running the Kubernetes, server. you know, Kubernetes running OpenStack, all VM container, cloud native, you know. And so now all of those different companies are spending enormous resources maintaining what is an essentially is open source that became proprietary because of the way that they integrated it was unique to their particular business. And so taking the lesson learned from that and really being focused on, hey, if the vision of Edge is to be realized um, while I'm still working, <laughs> we need to stop um, kind of the fractured nature by which these open source projects get consumed. Right. And we need to work as a community, not only in their um, building of these components, but in the way they get integrated to realize actual use cases. And right. so there's a project as part of LF Edge called Acrano, where that's exactly what the project is about. It's the community coming together with specific use cases in mind and saying, okay, for this specific use case, I would like to architect this with these components, these assets, and integrate it in a completely declarative fashion. This hardware, this software, this release of this software, et cetera, this is how you integrate it, this is how you render it, this is how we validated it. A lot of the open source projects don't actually validate the functionality that they attest to. Um, they'll have a feature and they release it, but how is it validated in what kind of test cases, with what kind of, you know, bandwidth constraints, et cetera. And so Acrano is really trying to say, hey, let's simplify this. Let's, nobody's going to differentiate on infrastructure software, right? <laughs> it's all going to be on the app services, yeah. business models running on top. How do we accelerate the infrastructure to make this possible and do so in a way that the whole community benefits for now and for the long term? Yeah. And I think that's really, really compelling. It is a different type of open source project in the sense that you know it's not as much of a development project, there are some development aspects, but it's it's really folks coming together to do the dirty work of making this stuff productizable. Sure. Um, and I think that that's really um, a tremendous effort. Now, I'm not an engineer, but I like to play one on TV. Shouldn't that be the model for all open source projects to drive adoption and drive scale? I think it should be, and I think we're kind of at the cusp of seeing some of this. I think you know, OpenStack's done some of this. The Cloud Native Compute Foundation is doing some of this, but what I think is differentiated about Acrano is it's actually pulling from all the upstream projects mm -hmm. um, to render these use cases as complete vertical stacks um, and reference stacks for the community. And um, and I, so I, I think we're in a pioneering kind of step forward mm -hmm. in the context of open source, and we'll see if it works. Yeah, there are definitely skeptics. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, we've got some time left, so I, I want to. I want to throw a bonus question to the team here. Um, Arpit stood up and dropped the mic when, we, uh, when, when ONS got kicked off and talked about how the impact of, of the edge potentially could be a 4x that of what we've seen with cloud. Now, mm -hmm. cloud's been pretty, pretty accepted. <laughs> and, you know, so for me, that's, that was pretty mind-blowing. So I'd love to get each of your, you know, your insight on how you see that happening? I mean, are, are there are there certain linchpins that'll 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 occur that'll that'll really drive that? So, Melissa, maybe start with you. So I apologize. I wasn't listening to your question. <laughs> I, I was thinking about the fact that I failed to mention a couple things when I was talking about. I got totally passionate about Acrano. Yeah. And I failed to mention the fact that there are a couple other projects as part of LF Edge, yeah. including the ones that our pit mentioned yesterday. Go when you it. said that, I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> Go for it. <laughs> Didn't say them, anything about those. <laughs> um, anyway, so there are some new projects that were part of LF Edge that were announced. Uh, Betel and Fledge were also, there's seven projects total. 
as part of LFEDGE, you've heard a couple mentioned here. Um, there's also a laundry list of new projects that are being contributed to LFEDGE. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity to, for folks to get engaged. And I think the reason that there's so much interest um, from the ecosystem and from the participants in LFEDGE and these different um, new projects is the diversity of use cases. Um, so while there is infrastructure software that are common components that can be leveraged, some of the challenges that exist in the context of edge technologies are, um, are unique and they're different and they require different software and different capabilities and components. Um, and so I'd encourage you to get, you know, to check out some of the new projects that were announced. There's a ton of documentation on the LF Edge website, the wiki.lfedge.org. Um, so you can, it's very easy to get informed in true open source fashion, everything's open. Um, so please leverage what's available to get more informed about these different projects. Thanks. And then the key, of course, is, is within LF Edge, all Linux Foundation projects is the governance. I mean, that vendor neutral governance. Uh, the whole point of an umbrella project, as probably many people know, you know, cloud native compute, LF networking, there's, there's a bunch of different, the model's been proven time and time again. It's yeah. bring it, be inclusive, bring projects in, even if there's some overlap up front, but then let the community, you know, working with that structured governance, the technical advisory committee and all that, you sure. know, help to, to, to kind of harmonize these projects over time. That's yep. a key part of that mission is that Nobody wins, as you know, Melissa said so well, like you're kind of reinventing you know, the, the middle. Um, someone told me once, like, open source is all about minimizing undifferentiated heavy lifting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is important. <laughs> Um, about that one for a while. Yeah, but to, to, to answer your question on the cloud, so there's a yeah. lot of stuff. I mean, I, all data is created at the edge, I and mean, there's no doubt that there's sure. there's just more and more devices you know popping up and on on networks, and this is going to cause um, you know. A lot of congestion and a lot of need to kind of shift compute. You know, is the cloud going away? No. No. Yeah. There's a lot of clickbait. Oh, the cloud is going to disappear. No. Right. Will the cloud always do the deepest of deep learning? Yeah. Are you going to see more learning happening at the at the edges? Uh, I call Absolutely. that shallow learning. Yeah. You know, a little closer, <laughs> closer to the edges. Yes. Um, you're going to see. The, the point is, is, is that we don't know where things are going to run. Sure. You know, in the end, we haven't even scratched the surface yet on the on the business models and the use cases and get out of just like you know POC party of one. Now try to scale you know, that solution. Now try to do that solution that intersects with other domains. Right. That's the real potential. And right. this is why you need open. You you can't cross yeah. public and private and you know all these different folks without trust at a system system wide level. So that's what the, you know, the big next conversation. The point is, if you architect properly, even if you, your right answer day one is to send all your data to some cloud and, and, and do stuff centralized, yeah. great. But you're not going to want to stay there because you're going right. to get the bill. It's going to be a hybrid you know, model. You're going to want a hybrid model. Yeah. And so over time, you, you need to be able to have that you know, transportability of workloads anywhere along that continuum. Right. And that, that means that you right now have to architect properly. And this is why you know, things like in Crano and stuff with, with Eve and we're doing, I mean, Home Edge is another project within mm -hmm. LF Edge of you know, what's, you know, even in the home, you're going to start seeing folks, you know, your, your, your gateway looks more like a server hosting all the different services. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and all of these trends, all these abstract, any, any, everything you can, abstract you know, uh, compute storage networking, Always separate the data from the underlying infrastructure. In the end, it's about consistent infrastructure with domain knowledge applied. Sure. The winners will have the best algorithm, have the best specialty hardware, you know, specialty software. No one wins reinventing the middle. Right. Um, so yeah, so that, the short answer is like, you're going to see a massive you know, change you know, across the board. The last thing I'll say, I want to you know, give time to Eric, is I get asked all the time, isn't 5G just going to make edge computing you know, a short-term lived right. thing? Yeah. Yeah, latency, you know, you know, you know uh, very low. But number one, I don't care how many nines you have on reliability. I'm not going to let you to deploy my airbag from the cloud. Yeah, <laughs> right. Not going to happen. <laughs> and number two, bandwidth always comes with a cost. Right. So the analogy I use is if, if you build freeways, people think, oh, I'll solve the traffic problem by building freeways. Well, what happens? More people move to town, suburbs, and then you right. have more traffic. Yeah. Everything raises up, so you get new experiences. It's going to be incredible, like all this cool stuff, but it's not going to solve the bandwidth problem. Right. And economics drive it as well, you know, license versus unlicensed. Yeah. Spectrum, yeah. we can go all day. Eric, why don't you close us out? You know, any additional thoughts here? Yeah, so I mean, if you look at where the edge is at, I mean, yes, all the people that are analyzing this stuff are saying that the amount of data that's generated at the edge is growing, and it's going to grow, and it's going to take over the amount of data that actually makes it to the cloud, just in terms of amount of data. If you look at actually deployed infrastructure, you can even argue that the edge is already here and already bigger than the cloud. Mm -hmm. It's just not connected yet, right? Mm -hmm. If you walk into a factory floor, you will find industrial PCs sitting in every machine on the floor, right? right? 
they might be running some app running Windows or whatever, and hopefully old version of it, but hopefully not connected <laughs> to the network because Windows it probably seven. hasn't been patched in a while, Windows right? Seven. Since they installed the machine. Windows on but, five. but people <laughs> want to get that right. data out, right? And 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 how can they get the data out? Well, maybe they deploy a separate you know industrial PC next to it that you know runs something more modern software-wise, you know, not Windows 98 or whatever, <laughs> um, and, and and then build it up. But but I think the opportunity is there, and and the being able to gather that data, do a bunch of the computing locally, and then saying, okay, what do I need to export from here to the cloud? How do I build a system? And making that easy to leverage from from the perspective of people developing applications as well as the people that want to deploy the network services that can actually connect that stuff together. So I think that that's a key thing. Excellent, excellent. Well, Eric, Jason, Melissa, thank you so much. Great insights. Enjoy the rest of the event. Yep, thank, thank you. you. Yep. Thank you. All right. Look at that.